And good afternoon, everybody. Welcome to BW Flight Simulation. We're going to be doing a flight here from uh, San Francisco to Las Vegas on the uh, PMDG 737-900. Sit back, relax, enjoy the flight. Let's get everything started. We'll get the FMS loaded right now. So we should have a company route, which we do. We'll go ahead and select that. Uh, we'll go ahead and hit activate. And we'll come in here and select departure. Winds are favoring uh, the two eights today. So we'll do the stick departure. Which, you know what? It wouldn't be the stick, it would be the Wesla. Intel. And then the arrival. I went too far there. Is the sunset arrival from Beatty, and just kind of pull up the uh, weather here in Vegas. Let's just take a look at it. Weather in Vegas or winds two two zero at six. Visibility ten miles. Scatter at ninety six hundred. Temperature three six two point one one. The altimeter three zero zero four. Our runways 26 left and 26 right are the active runways. Alright, so we'll go 26 left. And zero fuel weight. And our reserves will go with 5,000 pounds. Cost index of 55. 350 is our cruise altitude. Uh, the winds at cruise oh, I did not pull a wind because it's not in here Now it's online, but I already, let's see, can I rerun this? Let's rerun it. Release it. All right, let's see. There we go. 197 at 57. Let's see, 14 degrees, we'll go with 35. Takeoff, flaps, 5. We'll go with these, 154 is a rotation speed. So we'll set 154 here. Two eighty four. 5,000, actually be 3,000. <coughs> Let's go to the overhead. Let's set this to position. Uh, those will stay off. These will come on. Make sure we got everything going here. AP generators, battery, that's fine. That's good there. Coming down here. Those come on, windows, see probe heat's not yet, window, yes. These can come on for pushback. 350, 2250. Those are all on, looks good. All right, we will ask for pushback. Actually, there's no, uh, there's no ATC, so we don't have to ask for anything. Let's 
go ahead and add a collision light on, let them know we're ready. Ah, stupid parking brake. Let them know we're ready to push. We'll operate the jetway. Let's see, nose to the left, tail to the right. Door is closed, beacon light is on. Brakes are released, clear to push. Alright, packs are coming off. Go ahead and start the uh, right engine. Set this one to climb. Wow, that's a jacked up push. Uh, we're gonna run right into the belt loader here. Uh, that's a terrible pushback. I'm just going to stop it there, that was terrible. Brakes are set. Okay, we got a good light up. We'll start the left. And let's look for... Fuel's on. Five eighteen on the trim. Looks good right about there. One fifty four is rotation speed. Okay, we got two good engines. Where is it at? Overhead right there. Go ahead and put the generators on. Switch this over generator one. APU is coming off. Pedo static can stay off for now. Taxi lights can come on. Setting flaps to five. Flap should be five, which they are. Altimeter three zero zero seven. Initial altitude three thousand feet. Parking brakes released. Start the clock for the taxi. Uh -oh, I think we got that issue again. Yep, 
We got that issue again. Alright, let's stop it here. I gotta figure out how do I did this last time. It has to do with the, um... Thinking it's still on the chocks, and I gotta remember how to do this again. It's still doing it. So what I can do is I can maybe push it forward a little bit. Nope, I'm stuck on that too. Damn, I don't remember how to do it. I gotta think about this for a minute. How did I get this unstuck last time? Oh, you know what? I think I remember now. There we go, I got it. Just restart the uh, GSX. For some reason, it still thinks I'm on the chocks, and that's why it's not. Uh, it wouldn't roll. I don't know why. Even though the chocks are been taken off. GSX, I think, is a piece of crap. Anyways. Only thing good about it maybe is part of the pushback, but it can't even get that right sometimes. So just a quick look here at the taxi while we're making our taxi. We're gonna go Alpha, Foxtrot, cross one left, one right, and continue on Foxtrot, hold short two eight left. And we'll go ahead and we'll go and set up the weather radar so we can put it on the co-pilot side we hit weather radar now LNAV, VNAV Make sure there's nobody on the ones. No, nobody on the ones. Hey, what's up, Black Diamond? Thank you very much. Yeah, I thought I'd do a simple, easy flight here. SFO to Vegas. It's a nice, quick one. And then when we get to Vegas, we'll figure out where we go from there. Nothing like flying into Fly Tampa's Vegas scenery. I 
got the uh, bug bug guys coming out today to do their spray, so hopefully they won't interrupt my flight. They probably will. But that's fine. Alright, let's see what we got going on out here. So TCAS says it's off. Let's turn it on. No ATC on. As we're coming up, we'll go ahead and get our landing lights on, get all the appropriate lights on, the ignition switches go to continuous, strobes are coming on, oops, wrong ones. We're coming up the end of the runway here, and looks like the uh, finals are clear, we'll go ahead and line up and uh, take off, get the hell out of here. Once I get on the runway, I'll start the first officer's clock here. start his clock. And away we go here. The throttle's about 60%. Wait till it stabilizes. Looks like it's stabilized. We'll get hit Doga. Airspeed's coming alive. Got 80 knots, cross check, throttle hold. V1, V1 there's rotate. Positive rate, gears coming up. Flaps at two. I agree, Las Vegas is too much for my system, but I received an update computer from my bro yesterday. I should just have to install everything. I'm going to take my time. Oh, yeah, because there's just so much to install. Yeah, don't rush it. Oh, nice, man. You got a nice upgrade. Web plays. what's up, my friend? Good afternoon to you. How are you? Let's kind of turn on the departure a little bit here. Ah, Chris coming in with the 100 bits. Thanks so much, Chris. How you doing, buddy? Oh, Paul as well. We're just coming out to 2,500 for 3,000. We'll go ahead and continue to climb up to 350. Gear is up and off. I'm doing pretty good, web plays. Doing pretty, pretty good. Can't complain. It's a nice frickin' hot day here in California. Northern California. It's a hot one. Here we come on west low. We can start our left turn here in just a second. Flaps to one. We'll start our left turn. Yeah, it's crazy hot. It's gonna get. It's been pretty nice here in Northern California. Uh, we've been lucky. Uh, in Sacramento, it's usually way over 100. Uh, but the last couple of weeks, it's been like in the mid 80s to high 80s, and now we're finally hitting the hundreds again, which is never any fun. All right, we can go ahead and bring up our landing lights that we don't need here. We'll keep those ones on for now as we make our left turn. 
We'll hand fly this up to about 10,000 feet and then we'll let the autopilot take over. Oh yeah. Oh yeah, and Black Diamond, I bet, living, living in uh, Arizona, you guys have been having the monsoon stuff going on there. I have a pilot friend that lives in Scottsdale, and he sent a picture yesterday of the radar of that whole area, and it was blowing up with thunderstorms. Crazy. Yeah, there's Half Moon Bay down there below us. Kind of turn on the departure here, go to direct port. The high for you guys is 80, uh, 80s, oh wow. Yeah, that's crazy. I like summertime because I like it gets, it gets, stays lighter longer, but man, the heat is just crazy. Alright, we can go autopilot now. Let's bring up the FMS. Let's go direct to port. We are direct port at this time. And we're just waiting for flaps up. And we're at a 10,000 feet. You know what that means? Rest of the lights are coming off. Engine ignition switch is continuous. And guess what I forgot to put on? And I always do this. Luckily, it's not cold out, and the pedostatics come on. Had a big dust and rainstorm last night. Hey, what's up, Mike? How you doing? Yeah, Black Diamond, I saw that on the radar, man. That, that radar was lit up in Arizona. With the, you got that monsoon going on. It's crazy. How you doing, Mike? Hope is all good. Street Boss is in the house. What's up, Street Boss? How you doing? What up, what up, all? There we go. That right there looks pretty. Go ahead and bring flaps up now. That's what I'm talking about right there. Oh, nice. That's a good day to fly, man. Good day to fly. Chris, I can't remember if I told you thank you, but thank you for the 100 bits donation. Appreciate that. Thanks, buddy. Always appreciate that. There's San Francisco. We're, we're climbing like a bat out of hell here. Let's go in VNAV mode and help it out a little bit. Now we're making our left turn here just over port. And at this time, center would have gave us direct intel already, so let's go direct intel. That'll shave a little bit off too. Sync up the heading mode here. Boom. Intel is pretty much Fresno area, so that's where we're ahead. And we should be able to see, let's go in this what we call GoPro mode here. We should be able to see Moffett Field, which will be right over here, and then San Jose is over here. Let's go back on the outside view. Let's find a good view here. That's a good one right there. That's looking good. I haven't flown in a couple of days. I was itching to fly, so I said, ah, why not do a nice, easy flight? Yeah, Mike, I love the new United scheme. People were hating it. I was like, why? It looks so good. <coughs> I think the, the colors now that they have on the planes doesn't look all that great. I think this one's a lot better. Rosenberg won, uh, yeah, I know about the airlines here on Vatsim. Which one uh, in particular that you're talking about? I kind of, I'm a freelancer, so I kind of do my own thing. 
Uh, me and a friend of mine, we started a, a virtual airline a long time ago, a long time ago, uh, virtual Southwest Airlines. That thing got so big that we just, we didn't want to take care of it anymore and we got rid of it. And a guy up in Seattle took it over. There's two virtual Southwest Airlines, but the one I think uh, that was ours was, uh, I think it was virtualsouthwest.org or something like that. Uh, thanks, Black Diamond. Appreciate that, my friend. Yeah, Rosenberg, uh, you Southwest Virtual? It's a good airline. Good virtual airline. Let's see where we are here. Let's close it up. Let's hit the uh, follow. There we are right here. So we got Woodside, it's Moffett Field, and San Jose. And we are making our way to Intel, which is right here, which is the Fresno area. So that's where we're at. And you can uh, actually see here, our SID was the Westla, because we took off the two eights. So we hit that, or overlay that, and we'll bring it 70%. So I want direct, after port, I want direct to Intel, so that's why we're kind of off the route here, because we're going direct. So that's what that looks like on the chart. Yeah, I can't remember. I have to ask my buddy if we were the .com or we .org one. I can't remember. But we did it a long, 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 long time ago. We started it up, and it just got so big that we couldn't handle it anymore. It was just taking too much of our time, so we just got rid of it. And there was a gentleman up in Seattle that worked at Boeing, and he offered to take it over. And so we just we gave it to him. Oh, thanks, Black Diamond. Appreciate that. Let's see. We're we're out of uh, flight level one eight zero. We go to standard altimeter now, and we're coming up on San Jose. So let's see if we can see that below us. Uh, let's go with another view here, which would be this view, and we can look down. And there is San Jose International. So this is Imagine Sim scenery. It's an outdated scenery because a lot's changed. That's Reed Hillview Airport that's south of San Jose. It's a smaller airport there in San Jose. Zero nine one on the heading that is synced up. I'm sure everything I got going on here. Those packs can come on. That can come off. Da, 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 da. Seatbelt signs can go to auto. We're good. Let's bring this out a little farther here. We're at a 22 for 35. Let's see here, I run X, X plan on a Mac and I have no idea how to download the tracking software for filing your flights. Let's see, for, you mean the uh, software that Southwest Virtual uses? If it's uh, oh the X X A card, yeah. I, since I don't have, I do have X Plane, but I don't have it installed, and I don't use any of the A car stuff. Have you um, have you gone onto their uh, form and asked for help inside their form there, how to install that stuff? I don't know if I have anybody in here that has X Plane. If any of you guys do have x -Plane and knows what Brosenberg1 is talking about with the XA cars, um, you guys can help them out. That would be greatly appreciated. I don't, I don't use any of that stuff right now. Yeah, I would, I would, I would check uh, Brosenberg1. I would check with uh, Virtual Southwest and ask in their form. Uh, since that's something that they are using to do their flight reports and whatnot, I would ask them about it. Unfortunately, I don't have X planes, so I can't uh, I can't help you on that. Yeah, I'd keep on bugging them, bug them until you get an answer. I mean, that's what they're there for. And that's why they have a form and whatnot. I, I'd keep on bugging them. 
until somebody answered my question. Yeah, hopefully uh, you get somebody that can help you out with that. Unfortunately, I don't use any of the ACAR stuff. I'm kind of a freelancer myself, so I kind of do my own flights and And I pick real, you know, real flights off of um, FlightAware. So, like, the real United 358 just took off two, and they're just out of 12,900, and they're just west of Moffett Field. So I left a little bit early. <coughs> but I copy the real flights. Let me take a look here, because now we're going to be off the departure here soon. So you can see we're approaching Intel, so we're getting pretty close to uh, the end of the SID here. And so, and what we can do is, I might be able to add this flight plan here, which would be this one, and it should overlay it, and it does, there you go. So here on Navigraph, you can see the uh, We'll call it the pink line. That's your uh, your departure SID line, and then from there, this is your your filed route. And the orange, and then the green starts your star. So basically, we're kind of flying over the Clovis Fresno area, heading north up over towards Yosemite, and then out over Bishop, and then down towards Beatty, which is in uh, Nevada. So there's not much out here, not much to see, but that's what the uh, route looks like here on Navigraph charts. Let's see, I know I've been flying, I fly over for seven hours. Yeah, I, I copy, I copy the routes in the flights uh, from fly to where most of the time the, the flight plans are the exact flight plans um, sometimes they'll get a reroute and you'll still have the previous flight plan in there because it wasn't updated on the uh, fly to where side but overall it works really good the, the routes are pretty accurate Let's see, we're looking for arrival fuel in the Vegas, 6.9 on the fuel. There is some uh, thunderstorms over the Nevada, Sierra Nevada. we got little pockets of it. If you pull up United 358 on FlightAware, you can actually see that there is, on the radar there, there is pockets of thunderstorms that we're going to be flying around on this flight heading to uh, Las Vegas. And I think yesterday it rained a little bit there in Vegas as well. Okay, Rosenberg, thanks for stopping by. We'll see you in a little bit. Yeah, but I agree with you, Mike. This, uh, this paint, this new livery, I love it. I like how it says United in big colors. You know the plane up there flying and, and the controllers are calling out traffic, you'd be able to see that United, no problem. I can't wait to see what it looks like on the 777s and the 787s. Yeah, I have no issues with uh, uh, Vegas scenery. The FPS is, I'm using the mid-20s to mid-30s. And I'm running an i7-9700K. I got a 1070 video card, 8 gigs of memory. 32, I'm, I'm sorry, yeah, 8 gigs of memory on the video card. I got 32 gigs of memory in the system. 
So yeah, I don't have I don't have any issues at all. I used to get them so close they could see the pins in the pockets of the pilots. I know you did, Mike, and you did that on purpose. It's because you're that good. Okay, Street Boss, sounds like a plan, man. Yeah, like, I mean, if we're, if, right when it came out, everybody was complaining about it, and I was like, I don't see what the issue is. I think it looks really good. I mean, when they came out with the, li the livery that they have right now on their planes, I was like, what the hell is that? That, that still looks like Continental, you know? And they needed to move away from the Continental look, in, in my opinion, and be united. And I think this takes that Continental out of it, I know the, the crews probably don't like it because it has nothing to do with them anymore, but it's united. And that's, way it, that's the way it should be. It should be united's own colors. Yeah, I think that just looks... I think it looks classy. And I love the blue pinstriping coming right down the middle like that in the fuselage, separating the white from the darker gray, I guess you would call it, on their belly. I like that. Alright, 32.6 for 35. We're almost at top of climb here. Looks like we'll reach that just before Intel. And let's see how we're doing on the flight here. We got uh, 348 miles to go to Vegas. Top of climb in 21 miles. I don't know, I just really like the livery on this plane. Looks really good. That's all I've got installed in here now. Is the uh I have a couple of the old ones, but basically it's all the uh it's all the new guys here. Let them load up really quick. I mean all of them except for that one because that's the original download from T PMDG. And that one is two. This is the new color. Then all the triple sevens are still on the older colors. So hopefully they're going to have those updated, even the 737-700 I've got in the new colors as well. I don't know, it looks good, I like it. So we'll go ahead and hide that, we don't need that anymore. Where the hell are these bug guys at? We need to get this house sprayed. Get rid of all the freaking wasp. Freaking bastards. Yeah, it's it's, it's good. I like United too. United's probably uh American United, and then Delta, and then Southwest. Those are my favorite airlines in order. Alright, there's our thousand foot call out. Let's see, from Intel to cab is a 055 heading. Lufthansa. So you're an international airline guy. Yeah, Lufthansa's been around a long, 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 long time. I remember my aunt and uncle when I was a kid. My uncle worked for FMC corporation and they built like back in the day they built tanks they built RVs they built a whole bunch of other different things and he got he had to go to Frankfurt uh, for a meeting and they flew on a 747 400 and they came back with a whole bunch of back then they gave you postcards 
of the uh, airplanes and I remember I got a couple of postcards for the 747-400 for Lufthansa and that was cool oh no I did not know that oh the 747-800 yeah that's, that's an awesome airplane And they do fly the 747-800. Mike uh, Vatsim-10 there, he's, uh, if, I, if, if I'm correct, he's a Delta Airlines fan. You know what, Mike? I used to have it. I don't have it on the sim right now, but I did use it to make sure that it synced up with the UTC time. So when you're flying and you cross the uh, different, yeah, international, not the international, but the uh, time zones that it keeps it synced. I think it's free, isn't it? FS real time, wasn't it free? I can't remember, but it keeps your sim in sync. Yeah, it's FS real time, yeah. Yeah, I'm just looking at it right now here. It's from uh, Softworks Design Studios. FS real time. But doesn't, doesn't, I mean, if you use, if you go to your add-ons and go to FSUIPC and you go into miscellaneous and it says keep FS, uh, clock synced also in minutes after the number so every it's synced within five minutes of what the real time should be I don't think I've ever had problems with that unless the FS real time does does something better than than that as long as you have that check mark under FSUIPC, you should never lose time and should always be synced. I don't know. Maybe I'm wrong. Top of descent, 156 miles to go. And looking to where we see where we are here on the chart. You can see we've passed Intel. We're on our way to Cab. Cab to Vixen. Vixen Kino. Kino, take us. Take us to Beatty VOR, which starts the sunset for arrival. What do I use for your descent profile? Oh, on here? I think I got it. Let's see, does it just automatically? Let's do this. Flaps 30, 150. We don't need flaps full. Let's go into, let's see, initial reference, index, descent. So 301, 0 0.79, 301. Since it's a little bit bigger plane than the 900, of course, the you know from the, the 700, 800, 900, they're all different. They all say different things. I think the 700 is like I want to say it's like 0 0.78 and at 280. I think the 800 is like 290, and then the 900 is around 300 on the speed. I think the, all three of them are different, if I remember right. And then with like with the triple seven, it's like 320 on the descent. The next plane I need to fly is the 787 though. I need to take that thing out. I bought it and I haven't flown it and I need to fly it.
Yeah, the 78. Yeah, I've got to I've got to learn how to use it. Learn how to use the EFB uh, to put all your performance information in it, and then swap it over into the FMS. So I, I I need to do a flight with that thing. And if I do a flight with it, of course it's it's going to be a medium to a long haul flight. I'm waiting for them to hurry up and come out with the Dash 10. That thing's going to be awesome. I mean, that's, that's what I have as my background here. That's a Dash 10 right there, baby. Look at that thing. For a 20 engine plane, that thing is freaking huge. And it's just sexy. Just sexy. Yay. Don't you say that, Mike. If it ain't Boeing, I ain't going. Shame on you. I support Boeing no matter what. Just like I support, uh, support Gulfstream, Cessna, Lear, I support all those too. Right now, Boeing's getting a bad rap because of the Max, but I don't know. I still say that the uh, I I think some of it still played a pilot a pilot error in those crashes. I don't think they were trained well enough, in my opinion. Okay, Street Boss, sounds like a pro, pro, uh, sounds like a plan. No problem. Um, I think Boeing should have told the airlines about the MCAS system. I think they should have known about that because the engines were a lot bigger than the regular 737 so that's something that Boeing held back and didn't tell the airlines about which they should have uh, but a lot of the US crews when they did notice that there was an issue with the pitch they knew how to actually correct the problem and it was you know disengaging the trim and automatically taking it over and I think the other international carriers might not train their pilots as well and know what to do. Yeah, Black like Diamond, I think they, they did too because they were in competition with Airbus against the NEO and they wanted to get it out before the NEO. But I think uh, I think the crew should have known about the MCAS system and what the MCAS, MCAS system did and if it did do what it did on the two aircraft, how to, how to handle the situation or disengage the trim and do it manually so you're sit, so you're not sitting there fighting the airplane uh, who was it it was I think it was American United and Southwest all reported pitch issues and the crews disengaged the auto trim and took it over manually and corrected the problem Yeah, uh, I just, I just don't. These other countries just don't train, train their pilots as well as I think the U.S. and the U.K. Uh, might train their pilots in other parts of Europe. I mean, when the plane did come out, Boeing told the airlines, "There's not much to it. It's just, it's a maybe a longer version of the aircraft, the bigger engines." And they basically just had the pilots train on an iPad with the, the differences, which they probably should have put them through simulator training on the procedures that if something did like, like this happen, they know how to recover from it. That they should have done. Yeah. Now, before the plane gets back in the air, the FAA is now going to require all crews to go through simulator training and know what to do. 
even though these crews were probably already trained here in the U.S. on what to do if something like that happened. It's called runaway trim, basically what it is. You got to know. You got to know how to control the runaway trim and how to disengage it. And speaking of that, it's right here. These are your two levers you're going to pull to cut away for the, run the runaway trim. It's easy as that. You knock these two down, then you manually control the trim. And you can do it by the wheel, or you, you can still do it by the yoke. But you push these two in, that disengages it, and now you're manually activating the trim yourself. Basically is what it was. But a lot of these, these crews in these different countries weren't trained that way. Especially the, the Ethiopian one, you can, you can tell that they were fighting with the airplane if you look at the flight data information. The thing was going up and down, up and down, up and down, and then the last one was just a straight drop. Because they were sitting there, fought, they were fighting the autopilot. I don't think they ever disengaged the uh, trim and took it over manually. I think they were still messing with the autopilot. And it finally, when it took its nose dive, it just it wasn't going to recover. It was too late. Okay, Mike, take care, buddy. Thanks for stopping by. I appreciate it. See ya. Yeah, Black Diamond, yeah, I, I think they do send some of their pilots, and they're probably going to do that a lot more now. I think when a new airplane comes out, all pilots should be retrained. And the manufacturer should let the airlines know that, hey, we've had to put in this system because these engines are so large that the pitch and trim are going to have to be adjusted, and we put in this system where it'll automatically correct that that they should have been told about. But look what happened just a couple weeks ago. Airbus came out and said they had to do some software upgrades to the A320 Neros because the engines were so much larger and they were they were having the pitch trims as well. So see, that's something that they didn't tell the airlines about until the airlines started complaining that they were having pitch problems. So Airbus caught it before it became an issue. For Boeing, it was a little too late. And Airbus doesn't want to end up like Boeing, being sued for everything. But you know what? I still, I will, fl I would fly a Max to this day. I still have that much trust in it. I'm, I'm not, I'm not afraid to get on a Max airplane. Now we got some traffic out ahead of us. And he's a thousand feet above us. Thirty-six. Let's see if I can bring him up here. If he's going to be anywhere, he's going to be out here. And he's probably too far away for us to see him. He's too far away. Alright, I'm going to bring up the FMS really quick here. We're 58 from top of descent. I need to go outside and unlock the gate for this guy that's coming over. I'll be right back. Right, let's see what Black Diamond said here. Unfortunately, it changes in aviation for the better. Yeah, it's true. It sucks. But it's true. But if, I mean... It sucks for the loss of life, but now that you look at it, what's this plane going to be? This plane's going to be so much safer 
and it's going to, I mean, any plane that comes out now from anywhere is going to be that much safer now because of these issues and how they're being corrected. I mean, it, it's sad for the loss of life for that to happen, but now these planes will become a lot more safer than what they were before. And I know, be right back. All right, we're back in the uh, cockpit here. Heading in sync is set up. Uh, let's see what we got going on here. Showing 32 miles at top of descent. We've got 8,000 set. That's the lowest on the arrival. We can pull up the arrival here. We'll go to Vegas. Uh, let's see if we've had Vegas in here before. We have. And we'll pull up the sunset arrival. There's the sunset. And you can see we're coming from the Beatty transition. MyCal will fly level 210, Fuzzy at 16,000 and 250. And then Ipumi at 11 and 230. Nipso at 9, Sunset at 210 and 8. And Kimmy 210 and 8 chips 210 and 8 and we'll start our turn into the uh, approach for one way 26 left uh, we'll go ahead and throw that on the chart here and we'll bring it to 70 percent and you can see we're already joining the arrival right now uh, coming in over take us uh, the weather program that I'm using is I've got uh, active sky as my weather and then I am using um, oh what's it called Rex environment and Rex environment uh, and Rex environment force so Rex clouds with Rex environment force this is what that's what the clouds that you're seeing they're all Rex clouds I don't I'm not using active sky clouds I'm just using active sky weather And that's what gives all the puffy clouds and whatnot is Rex.
And I got a, I got a feeling these guys are going to show up right when I'm on approach. Yeah, they look, they look really good. These clouds look, I mean, they look awesome. You can see them in the background back there. Thunderstorm clouds, thunder clouds. They look really cool. You can see where I make my made my turn right there from the uh, contrail. I'm gonna go ahead and turn on our um, I'm gonna turn our seatbelt signs. I think it's gonna be a little bumpy here when we start down. So we'll get that we'll get that turned on. We're gonna be starting our descent here any minute. Five miles. So we'll get that turned on for the packs to make sure that they know it's gonna be a little bumpy. It'll be nice, Black Diamond, when you get your, uh, you get everything set up on your computer and getting that 40 inch monitor turned on. It's gonna, it's probably gonna look amazing. I run two 27 inch monitors, Acer monitors, on my system. So I have dual, and then I have my uh, iPad. I can run the uh, FMS off my iPad. And then I have another computer, so I've got my flight sim computer with the two monitors, and then I have another separate computer off to my left hand side with a separate screen where I can run other stuff off of. So I'm running two systems, three monitors. There's our top of Decent. We've started our Decent into Lost Wages, which hopefully everybody's going to be there this next coming up year for the FS Expo. I'll be there again. Since it's only about an hour and 15 minute flight for me, it's a cheap flight. So I'll be going to FS Expo again. Last time I flew out of Stockton. Uh, hopefully I'm going to try to fly out of uh, Sacramento this time. I flew Allegiant out of Stockton, which is, I mean, it wasn't bad at all. It was, I mean, it's a no thrills airline. You know, they don't get anything special. But uh, it was really cheap. But I'd like to fly out of SAC this time. So I'm going to buy my, uh, once they get the date set up, I'll get my tickets way in advance. It'll be a lot cheaper too. Hotel wise, I, I, when I book crews into um, hotels, I usually try to use hotels.com so I get reward. By every 10th night, I get a night free. So I have a, I already have like like three or four nights free in Vegas. By the time I, by the time it comes around, I should have a whole week there free. So I'll find a hotel and stay somewhere close by the venue. Chili Willies, what's up, brother? Welcome, welcome. Yeah, Street Boss, you got to go, man. I went. To, I didn't go to this year's. I went to last year's. And I had a blast, had a great time, met a lot of great people. Met your Chili there, Chili Willie's great guy. Um, of course, met, you know, Nico and a whole bunch of other, Matt Davies and a whole bunch of other people. And it, back then, I was a, I was, wasn't really known in uh, the streaming and Twitch and whatnot. Now that I've, you know, been streaming a lot more and getting more followers and whatnot, um, I've got to lot, know a lot more people. And uh, this next coming up year will be, be a great year to go. Cigar bars, huh? Why not? I'm up for anything, Chili Willies. I'm there to have a good time and meet people and hang out and have good drinks. I'm, I'm up for anything, dude. 
Vegas is uh, Vegas is fun. I had a blast last year. That was really fun. Yeah, I'm up for anything, man. And like I said, now that I know a lot more people in the streaming community and on Twitch and whatnot, it'll be a lot more fun for me too. I'll be able to hang around with a lot more people, more people that I've met. Um, so it'll be a lot more interesting. And it'll be fun. I can't wait. Oh yeah, you, you got to Black Diamond. It, it's totally... I never, last year was my very first one I ever went to, and I, after that one I said, I gotta keep on going. And, you know, unfortunately I wasn't able to go to Orlando this year. I have too much going on with my daughter graduating high school, then our 50th, our birthdays, my wife just had hers, mine's coming up, and then we have our 25th wedding anniversary coming up in September, and then we're trying to go to Hawaii, take the kids to Hawaii in September. It just don't have the funds for all that. So unfortunately, I, I wasn't able to go. So yeah, I'm in uh, I'm in Sac, Sacramento. So I, I'm NorCal. Sacramento. So see Vegas, man. That's a hop, skip, and jump for me. It's a 10-hour drive by car, or maybe 10 and a half by car, and only an hour and 15-minute flight. We've only drove it once. It's just a long ass drive in the middle of the desert. Nah, it's not worth driving unless you've got a lot of time off and you want to make that drive. For all means, go for it. But driving through Bakers when you go down, because I live off of 99 in Sacramento, so I would take 99 all the way down through Fresno, Bakersfield, Barstow. Mojave's cool. Mojave's cool to go through because you get to see the, the graveyard out there with all the plans. But other than that, yeah, it's a boring ass drive. It's totally worth flying. Out of Stockton, it was only like an hour and five minutes. All right, let's let's uh, let's pull up the weather here in Las, Las Wages. Let's see, weather is now reporting, it's becoming, winds are calm, 10 miles visibility, scattered at 9600, temperature is 37, which is a cool 99 degrees, and at dew points 11, the altimeter is 3003. So we can go over to the first officers, we're going to dial in 3003 here. Oop, I set that to inches on accident. Three zero zero three set. So once we pass eighteen, I'll hit the standard. It'll set to three zero zero three. Yeah, it, it's a it's a long ass drive. And, and you know, if you're f afraid of flying, then drive it. But if not, freaking fly it. All right, we're past eighteen thousand three three zero zero three is set. Let's make sure we got it set here in our standby. Base is set. We're going to go to auto brakes too. And we're going to pull up the charts again. What did I do to them? There we are. We're just coming up on fuzzy right now. And we're going to look for the ILS. More likely we're doing the visual, but we have it in there. 259-111-5. Okay, we'll set up the approach course to 259. Set there. 259 set over here. That is set, and then our radios is 111 One five set twice. We are dialed in. So we're coming up on 16,000 feet where we need to be at fuzzy and 250. We're slowing it down. We've been in the air for 53 minutes. Yeah, 
Yeah, it's a little cloudy here. It's got you got the monsoon stuff going on here in Vegas. I'm gonna go ahead and throw on the lights now so I don't forget. Engine switches go to a continuous. Yeah, it's a little cloudy. No rain's been reported, but the overcast is 9600. And it's just your monsoon season stuff going on here. We've got a D cell coming up here pretty soon. go back here and look we'll see where we're on the map. Here's Las Vegas. We're on the stars, the green, and then the uh, orange or whatever you want to call that color, tangerine, is the approach to two sticks left. Yeah, we're, we're coming into the soup as we speak. And actually, here's Vegas right here. I got a feeling these guys are going to bug me. Let's see. That's right, Lady Flyer and Isabella. How you doing? Yeah, it's just clouds. Ain't, ain't no big thing. Let's go right through them. Ain't nothing but a thing. There's Lost Wages right there, everybody. Coming into view on the left. Yeah, there's nothing like, uh, you know, like I said, I love the summers because it stays lighter longer, but I love the winters because of the weather. It's so much more fun to fly in the winter. Because you know you're flying in the crappy weather. Pretty much no matter where you go. You can see there's Vegas Airport right there. Vegas downtown's the strip right here. It's Vegas Airport. And there it is, starting to draw in right now. Oh yeah, crappy weather is the is it's it's the best weather. Where are you at right now, Street Boss? Are you on the arrival yet? We should have a D cell coming up here, which will bring us down to 230 and then 210. You're at 17. Okay, so I'm probably I'm probably going to be ahead of you. Okay, there's the speed coming back to 230.
Come on, let me land this plane with nobody coming to the door. They're supposed to call me before they come. So just let me land the airplane, then you guys can come and spray all you want. Just let me land. Okay, next altitude, Nipso at 9, and then 8. And then I'm not, I'm not going to fly all the way out to uh, Lake Mead out there and make my approach. I'm going to cut it kind of short because obviously I had the visual on the airport. So it's going to be a visual approach. We don't need the flight plan anymore. Um, let's bring in the chart again. 2-6 left. Overlay it. 70%. Yeah, I'm not going to come all the way out here and then make my approach. I'm probably going to start it right here at Shand or something. So I'm going to get down past 8,000 and then fly it in visual. There's the airport right there. There's the sevens. We're going to go ahead and set flaps to one. I'm going to go ahead and start bringing the speed back now. I'm going to take this everything over now. 210. And I'm going to come down to 8,000. Yep, that's what I'm getting ready to do right now. That's what I'm getting ready to do right now. I usually take it over uh, right at 10,000. Just like on the departure, I flew it up to 10,000 and then put the autopilot on. Keep on bringing it down. Speeds at 210. One thing I didn't do and I like to see... Yeah, yeah, I know, drag is required. What I need to do is in menu... And it's not actions. PMDG options simulation. Because I like to see where the thrust is at. Ah. Alright, we're going to bring the speed back to 180. Like I said, we're going to start our approach over Shan. We're going down to 6,000 feet. And let's see, Shan is above 4,900. Kind of keep an eye on the speed here. Go ahead and go another notch of flaps. looks good, speed looks good. Where are you at, Street Boss? How much closer are you? Right when I'm parallel with Shan, I'll start my left turn. Okay, flaps going to five. Speed brakes on. Don't 
30 mile close, okay. Yep, that's Lake Mead Black Diamond right there in front of me. Alright, I'm going to start bringing down a little bit more. Gear's coming down. Starting the left turn. Coming down in the descent. I'm going to go over here. Bring the speed back to 170. 150 is our final. There's downtown, flaps going to 10, speed's coming back. Two six lefts in sight. Flaps 15. Throttles coming off. Throttles are mine. 150 is the approach speed. We'll dial that in. Runway headings 284. I'm sorry, 259. I don't know what I'm thinking, 284. I'm thinking San Francisco. 10,000 feet, go around. A little, bo little below the speed here, a little bit more throttle. Coming down nicely. We got one more notch of flaps to go. I fly DCS, I love low flying downtown. Yeah, buzz downtown the strip. Fly right down the middle of the strip. The street boss is going to be right behind me. Alright, going to control that speed, 150. Okay, we're bringing in last notch, so last notch of flaps coming in. Go ahead and get our taxi lighters on. We'll go ahead and start the APU. We've got plenty of runway to work with if we're a little high, which we are. Sink rate is flying. We got one red, we're looking for two.
We're floating. We're floating. Damn it. Reverse thrust is in. 241. Disgusting. That was terrible. Take the high speed. There was a float there at the end. Oh well. What you gonna do about it, right? I'm down. I didn't break anything. That's the most important important part. I didn't break anything. It's nothing to write home about, though. All right, we're gonna hold short of the runway here. We're gonna bring up these lights. Engine ignition switches can come off. We'll just go to steady, and we'll cross the runway here. All right, Black Diamond, no problem, buddy. I'll be on later on. I'm probably going to do another flight uh, out of here, maybe going back to San Fran or heading off to Denver or something, but I am going to be doing another flight here in a little bit. I'm waiting for these guys to show up. So uh, we will see you on the flip side. See anybody out there yet? I'll, I'll get here and turn eastbound so I can see Street Boss land. Hopefully, Lady Flyer, I did okay in your book. That was a little bit of a float. Alright, let's see where Street Boss is at. Let's see if we see him come into view here. Yeah, I see you. Right there. I see you. Let's see, we're going to gate. Ah, it didn't give us a gate, did it? Their street boss landed and it doesn't give us a gate. Well, I think I know where they park anyway, so we're fine. Rider comes street boss in for his landing. There's a the flare. Nicely done. Very nicely done. Nice job. Flying the Delta Colors. Very nicely done, Street Boss. Alright, we're going to take this taxiway coming up right here. This next one looks like it's Charlie 5. United's in the back back here. Nice job. Alright, I'm going to 
go back into the cockpit here. We're going to go ahead and turn off the taxiway light. They don't need that anymore. We're going to go APU generator on. And we're going to pull into one of these gates here. Take this one right here. Gear off? Yeah, why is that like that? That's weird. Maybe I touched the handle. Maybe that's what it was. That's weird. I might have hit the uh, landing gear lever on the yoke. Maybe that's what it, it set it up like that. That would suck if the gear would have collapsed, huh? I must have hit it because it's right by my uh, it's right by my hand here, so I probably hit it as I was coming in. All right, let's see here. Uh, let's go to one more here. We'll park it right here. Brakes are set. And let's go over here and brakes are set. We can go, the engine's coming off. We have the APU on. And go ahead and bring the uh, APU bleed on. We can turn off the pedo stacks come on, the electricals come off. Well, put the, put the, coming through here. We can turn off the seatbelt signs. Those are coming off. APU generator, standby power. Mm -hmm. Fuel pumps can come off. I can leave the aft one on for the APU. And everything looks good. And we'll go to the outside view really quick here. Let's call for deboarding. Let's bring the jetway over. It's united, of course. Is the jetway moving? Hello, uh, jetway. No jetway. Oh boy. I hate when it does that. It's got a jetway, it wants to work. Let's see. Request deboarding. What do you mean, no jetway? It's irritating. All right, we'll get the doors open here. I don't know why the jetway is not working. Open up the cargo doors. Let's try it one more time. Nope. All right, we'll just leave it like that. I don't know why the jetway is not working. All right, guys and gals, thanks for joining me on this flight from uh, San Francisco to Las Vegas. I'm going to take a break here, and then we'll come back and uh, do another flight, uh, possibly uh, head out of here and head over to Denver. So we'll be back shortly and take a small break, and then we'll be back. We'll talk to you guys in a bit. See you.